Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to the very short part one of um, what's probably going to be two podcasts looking at simple accruals and prepayments. Um, we're going to look at what they are, uh, what we adjust for them, and how we do the tier count. Accruals, it's an old fashioned term. Accruals basically accrued expenses are where we've actually had an expense, but we haven't yet paid for it. So, for example, um, if you're using a mobile phone, and you're paying at the end of the month at some point you actually owe quite a lot of money to the mobile phone company um, in this case here we've got wages so during the year business has paid five thousand five hundred dollars in wages but at the end of the time period they still owe five hundred dollars so the amount that's being paid for wages is five thousand five hundred but the value of the wages the company has used and not yet paid for is five hundred dollars so the total wages should be 6,000. If we look here, I've done a little uh, diagram showing the timings of things. We've got the full financial year for this company, which happens to run from January to December. The paid wages, okay, but in December, there's some extra wages of $500 that have yet to be paid, and they need to be paid. So the total of all of the expenses for the year is 600. And that matches something or meets something called the matching principle. What that says is that in accounts, what we should try to do is to match or put expenses in the year in which the revenue occurs. So we will have used those salespeople to sell the goods for us or to make goods if it's workers. And therefore, we should include that expense as part of this year's expenses even though we'll pay for it maybe in January or February. Okay, straightforward part and if you're doing an exam question you should always try and make sure you get this one right for having to do with tier count. We know that we spent 5,500 in wages from the bank. I'm going to put it in here as one entry. Obviously probably there are actually a number of entries through the year. I'm now going to put in the expense of 500 on the debit side because that expense of 500 is going to be part of this year's expenses. What I'm also going to do is I've got the carried forward, the 500, I need to have a bought forward. And the bought forward is logical because next year we're going to owe $500. So what does that mean now? Well, debit side equals 6,000. Credit side has got to equal 6,000 when I balance off. It's an expenses account. So the, the difference is 6,000 now, that needs to go to the income statement as the expense. Okay, slightly more difficult question in some ways. Now we've got prepayments. Prepayments are where we pay for something in advance. So we pay for something and we're going to use it in the next financial year. And in this case here, business has made um, a number of payments. It's made four payments of $600 each during the year. And then on the 1st of December 2015, we've made a fifth payment of $600, which is to cover the next three months rent. So first of all, these four original payments, okay, they total, what, $2,400. They go on the debit side because it's an expense and there'll be a credit entry in the bank. I could have, and you could have quite as well, have made this payment as part of that number there. If you made up 3,000, it wouldn't matter. But we've made an extra payment of $600. But now when I look at my timeline on my timeline, um, I've got the 2400 that should be in this year's expenses, and I've spent $600 here in the orange covering December, January, and February. So what I need to do is to find out which bit of that expense belongs to the current financial year, and it's obviously going to be a third of it because it's three months covered by that $600. So divide 600 by three gives me 200. So I've got a prepayment um, of... $400 in total. So my prepayment, the bit that isn't an expense for this year, and therefore I'm going to take it out, goes on the credit side. I'm going to put in a debit entry as a balance bought forward for the prepayment. And that's because I'm owed either the use of the uh, the building that I paid the rent on, or I made my $400 back next year if they uh, move me out of the building. And now I just balance off the accounts like normal. So the balancing figure will go to the income statement because it's an expense. Okay, so we've got 3,000 on the debit side. I need to have 3,000 on the credit side. And therefore, the amount that goes to the income statement 
is 2,600. And I know that's right because either A, I can look at all the payments, the expenses during the year, 2,400, and add on the bit of the final payment that belongs to this year, 52,600. Or I can look at my whole payments for the year, $3,000, and then I can subtract the $400 that belongs to future years. And that gives me a total of 2,600. 